All right, here we go. We're going to do this uh, essential exercise from 5.2. Express the limit as an in definite integral on the given interval. So here we have a limit as n approaches infinity, sum summation i equals 1 to n, and then this function, e to the xi, 1 plus xi, delta x, from 0 to 1. And let me go ahead and write down that I'm starting the solution. And then I'll begin. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we are going to use the definition of uh, Riemann sum. Oh, okay, if I'm spelling it right. Okay. Uh, actually, let me not say that. The, the definition of the definite integral. Um, All right, so I'm going to write down the integral from a to b, f of x dx equals the limit as n approaches infinity, summation i equals 1 to n, f x i delta x. And x is between a and b. Now, um, in fact, we can write f x i star as a, as a more general definition. I mean, that's actually the definition of the definite integral but um, one of the ways we can write it. But if I, that, if I choose xi star, xi star is meant to be any number between xi minus one and xi. I'll, if I'm gonna choose any one, I'll just pick the right one, which is what's apparently going on above here. Um, but, but let me just do this problem and, and say what's going on is that they're giving, in this problem, they're giving us the right-hand side of the definition. And we're trying to find the left-hand side. So if I just look at this, I can, you know, just sort of make a comparison of here. I mean, I just look at the two and compare the two, and apparently what I see is that fxi is equal to e to the xi 1 plus xi, and so there, therefore it follows that f of x is e to the x divided by 1 plus x. So I replace xi by x, and I get that. And so then I just go ahead and just give my answer. So this one's a really short problem, which is essentially asking us to memorize the formula or the definition of definite integral. Um, okay, now we're going from A to B. Well, um, th those are our bounds. Well, our bounds are actually given over here as 0 and 1. So that's our A and B. So I, I, could, I might write that down somewhere else here. A equals 0, B equals 1. But okay, so I go from 0 to 1, and f of x is e to the x power 1 plus x. And then I write dx. So, I mean, we can sort of think of the delta x becomes dx, the sum with the limit becomes this integral symbol, but um, that's one way to look at it, I suppose. Okay, um, now we're going to go on to another problem where this time we have the same definition. However, what they're doing is they're giving us the, let me copy that, we're, they're giving us the left-hand side, and we're supposed to find the right-hand side. So here's our, you know, here, here's our definition. And maybe I'll erase the highlighting. All right. So I have that, and apparently we're given the left-hand side, so we can see that A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 3. Why, why am I saying that? Well, I just, you know, I just compare A, B... One, three, you know, I, I, that's a comparison. And in a similar way, I can say, well, look, f of, f of x um, seems to be square root of 4 plus x squared. So we're going to use this definition. And here's our solution. Now, um, it follows then f x i, if I replace x by x i, is square root of... 4 plus xi squared, so that we get that this is the whole thing is equal to limit n approaches infinity. What do I mean the whole thing? 
1 to 3 square root of 4 plus x squared dx. That's limit as n goes to infinity, summation i equals 1 to n. And let me improve there. And I have fxi. Well, fxi is square root of 4 plus xi squared dx. Well, not dx. I'm going to write delta x now. Now, this, to me, I feel like I sort of got somewhere. In, in, but, but for the answer in the book, we're going to do more. We're going to uh, also use this other, these other formulas that delta x is equal to b minus a over n and xi is equal to a plus i delta x. The, it's the question is how much, F, how much into the, the weeds am I going to get here? So what's going on is, is uh, without doing a, a really good graph of this, just suppose the graph is something like this. I am going from A to B. Well, I might as well use the lines on here. Okay, so I go from A to B. And the process that we do is we make rectangles. And it's, you know, maybe better if I do really nicely done rectangles, but I don't want to drag out this video too long. But I make these rectangles. And what I do is I, I partition the... I partition the interval from A to B. Let me just improve on, on this a little bit. If I'm going from A to B, I do a partition. Here's B. B is Xn. A is X0. Now, the length of each of these partitions is delta X. It's evenly cut into these pieces. Okay? But so we can see how what's the length of these of this? Well, of each delta what's what's the length what is delta x equal to? The length of each partition. I take b minus a, which gives the length of the whole interval, that's b minus a, and I cut it up into n pieces. So that's why I get the delta x equals b minus a divided by n. How do I get that xi is a plus i delta x? Because just look for example at x4 x4, see x4 here? I, for x4, I, I start at a, to find x4, I'll start at a, and then I'll add delta x four times. And so in this situation, i is equal to four. So we can see that x4 is a plus four delta x. In general, xi is a plus i delta x. Okay, maybe I'll need more space. For this, but anyway, um, so delta x is equal to b minus a over n. Well, b minus a is is three minus. Let me write down again b minus a over n. So this is going to be three minus one divided by n, and that's two over n. On the other hand, xi is a plus i delta x. Well, a is one, and then I have i times delta x, which I just found out is two over n. So we can maybe make it look a little better. It, it's delta xi is 1 plus 2i over n. So therefore, fxi is equal to, as, as written above, square root of 4 plus xi squared. But that's going to equal square root of 4 plus 1 plus 2i over n squared. I'm finding myself sort of... Um, getting cramped here, which is never good, really. It's one of the, I think, a big problem between these is you don't want to, you don't want to make everything too closely together. All right, so now I'm going to follow up with what I add from above here. I, I, I'm getting my, making my way on the answer. Um, and I'm just going to fill in now. Delta X is 2 over N and FXI this this expression here, so I'm ready to go for the final answer. 
The final answer is limit n approaches infinity, summation i equals 1 to n. And instead of square root of 4 plus xi squared, I'm going to write, I'm going to replace xi by that, the, um, you know, by the expression that we found there. And then for delta x, I replace that by 2 over n. And let me go ahead and change the color just for the final. That's, that's our answer there. Let me put a box around it. Okay, so that does two problems um, where we just play around with the definition of the definite integral. And, um, and that, that's practically what the whole point of this is, is we play around with the definition of definite integral and we do these problems really just to force us to memorize those definitions or, and use those. Um, I hope this little picture wasn't too terrible. It was certainly not very neat. My lines weren't very straight. But here we have xi, delta x is the, uh, yeah, it's probably the, not a very good picture there. But okay, so let's just uh, finish up with that one.